again everyone, it's me, Matmus. Hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. I have just finished my long weekend for Thanksgiving, which was very nice by the way. Um, hope you all guys did too, if you uh, celebrate Thanksgiving, especially here in Canada. Uh, the Americans celebrate theirs a little later, but uh, I'm returning from dropping off some family off uh, to another town near in southern Alberta here, and I'm traveling back, and as I always do when I get a little bored traveling back, I like to have a little chat with you guys on the channel and talk about some random topics that I've decided to talk about in this journey. So today's discussion and what I'm going to kind of put my opinion to is how the generation of military junior soldiers coming through has changed since my entry into the armed forces back in 2003 or wherever it was. Now, this is inherently pretty natural. It's pretty normal. You know, we're going to go along the lines of Back in my day, it was like this. And yes, of course, every soldier, when he goes, he or she goes through their career and they progress and get more experience, they're always going to say, back in my day, it was a lot harder. And back in my day, it was this and that. Now, I want to don't really want to poise too much towards that end of the spectrum. I want to sort of focus more on what is it that is making soldiers, young junior soldiers join, tick? What's making them want to join? What's making them want to stay? And why is it that that mentality has changed a lot in time that I've been serving in the armed forces myself. Now, when I joined up, um, it was very apparent that I had uh, a duty to fulfill. Now, in 2003, uh, that was the time period of which, of course, Afghanistan and Iraq were very prominent. Uh, 2001, the British had just returned back from, you know, uh, the second Gulf War. Um, and it was a pretty heavy time for the British armed forces with troops coming back and forth from deployments. And as a young junior soldier joining at 16, I was pumped. I was like, oh my God, I get to you know, talk to all these soldiers that have been all over the world and doing all sorts of cool things, uh, going on pretty heavy operational deployments. And my mindset was hooked. I was like, I want to deploy. That is my end state. That is my goal. That's what I want to do. I want to deploy. I want to go on operational tour. I want to go to Afghanistan or Iraq. I don't care. I just want to serve my country. You know, we've had, uh, you know, 9-11 attacks and, of course, the attacks in the London Underground in the UK. And these things were happening when I was going through my service. So they were pretty heavy to me. Of course, 9-11 had already passed, but the London Undergrounds are pretty heavy to me. And they took a heavy toll on my conscience and been like, wow, like people are attacking my home country. Like, I need to do what I need to do. So anyway, for me, my mentality was not only that, but to be a part of something bigger, to belong to something, be a part of a team. Uh, put on my uniform, be proud every morning, and I still do that every day today. What I'm finding with soldiers joining today, and this isn't, this isn't, you know, throwing a blanket over every single junior soldier. I'm not saying that all junior soldiers feel this way, but what I'm getting as an observation, and what I see a lot of is this. A lot of your junior soldiers, especially that are joining the Army Reserves, are using it as very much so a resume builder and that's not a bad thing in fact it's a very good thing but the problem I find with that technique or that I guess mindset is that it's only one sole purpose it's all on you it's about me 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 I just want to join the reserves to get some experience to throw it on my resume and be done with it I don't really have any true passion in it I don't have any connection to that it's not something I really want to do. I'm just showing up to get the tick in the box, put the, the, the medium amount of effort in to get what I need to do so that I can go back to college or after college and put it nicely on my resume and say, I served in Canadian Armed Forces, which in you know any military around the world looks pretty good on resume. If you've done your service, you've had no problems with discipline or you know, negligence, then yeah, it looks really good on your resume. The problem I find with that is it's, it's not... It's not integral to what it should be about joining the military. And everybody has their own agendas. Everybody has their own prerogative. And I'm not going to, you know, diminish that and say, <coughs> excuse me, you know, you just joined the army to get a resume. It's a terrible, terrible thing. No, that's, you know, like I said, everybody has their own way of doing things. But it is a bit of pill to swallow as, you know, an upcoming leader and as someone who has extreme passion in the military to find individuals that are really just using the system to get something that benefits just them and, and really isn't a huge contribution to the bigger picture of the family and the ethos of the military. And it really is hard for me to see that because I don't want people going on, you know, operations that just want to go because, 
you know, I just want something to look good on my resume. And that, to me, it's tough. It's tough to, to hear that. Um, I'm, and again, I'm not saying all people are doing that, but I am observing that mentality a lot more. And it's funny because a lot of the people that I speak to that have that kind of mindset openly admit that they don't have too much of a care for the military. They're just doing it so that they can get some, some qualifications and some, some ticks in the box. But is that the right way of going about doing things? Is that really the best way of, of being a part of, a, of an organization, especially something like the military? I'm not saying that if you're joining the reserves, you have to make a career out of it and that you need to be like 120% every single day and, and focus just on providing for the armed forces and serving your country. Absolutely not. We all have our own things going on. But when you're openly telling me, oh yeah, I have no interest in the army. I just, I'm only here so that I can go into policing later on. I'm just using this as a, as a stepping stone. That's hard for me to listen to. And I'm sure many of people will agree with me when I say this. That's not the right reasons for you wanting to join the military. You're not getting enough out of it. There's a couple of ways about thinking about this. Okay, so you're going to join the army. You're going to get your experience. You're going to put in the medium or minimum amount of effort to do that and to get that tick in the box. And then you're going to get it on your resume. Has that really taught you anything though? Other than setting yourself up for a piece of paper that has some writing on it? Has that really given you the core skills of teamwork, leadership, integrity, you know, courage, discipline, all those sort of things? Have you really invested 100% into those things that would actually give you not just a tick in the box for a piece of paper and to look good on whichever job you're going to apply for, but actually give you some core structure and grounding to go into a career with the exact right mentality and core skills that are gonna help you benefit your job? If you can see where I'm going with this, what I'm saying is, it's fine if you want to use the military as a stepping stone. You know, it is. And I'm not against it. It is concerning, but what I would like to suggest to these people, I try and tell them is, don't put the medium, like the minimal amount of effort into it. Try and get something out of it, other than just trying to create this image for yourself. Oh yeah, I served in the armed forces, or I served in the military, the army, marines, navy, air force, whatever it may be for so long in even the regular force, and this doesn't just apply to the, reg uh, the, res the reservists, it applies to the regular force too. Maybe put 110% effort into that short stint that you're trying to do. No one says you have to stay in the military forever, and it's not for everyone, and not everyone wants to stay in and do the full-time career, but try your best to milk every ounce of experience you can out of it. Don't be showing up to one or two weekends in a year in the Army Reserves and expect this level of respect and dignity that you should have when you serve a full career and say the reg force because it's a totally different world it's a totally different mentality don't put in the bare minimal it, milk that lemon right as much juice as you can out of it out of the military go on courses help each other out work on community projects do whatever you possibly can to make the most of being part of that title that you're trying so eagerly to get and I, I want people to start coming into the army and into the military because they want to be there, not because they just want to use it as some, you know, simple scapegoat. I don't, un I don't even understand how people can join a, such a serious organization, such as the army or the military in general, the armed forces, and just go along with the flow and go with the flow. To me when you invest your life into something like that, because you are changing your lifestyle, even as a reservist, it needs that commitment. And if you're just on the basis of, I'll do as, as little as I can, you're not helping anyone, especially yourself. And I know this for a fact, and I see it in the generation of soldiers that are coming through, and this is really what we're talking about here, is the generation of soldiers is, the older I get, <coughs> being a boomer and all, the older I get, the more and more of this I see, and the less and less I see of those people joining because they want to be part of that organization. They want to be a part of something bigger. They want to serve their country. They want to be an active participant in an organization that is fulfilling a higher purpose than just getting paperwork and getting qualifications and getting skills. They put uniform on, they're pumped to do exercises, they're pumped to do even the most menial, stupid tasks that are horrible to do. They're pumped when things like, you know, Remembrance Day comes up because they want to be involved and they want to showcase, um, you know, their pride and respect for, you know, um, remembrance of 
veterans and remembrance of those who have passed and conflicts past, that to me is really what hits me hard, being around those people. And the ones that just, uh, you know, they, I've seen it and it shocks me. It's absolutely shocking when I see it, but I've seen soldiers, active serving soldiers that roll their eyes and are like, oh no, it's veterans week. Like, oh no, Remembrance Day is coming up. And I have to bite my tongue because <laughs> it doesn't go well when I have that kind of conversation with people. But those are the people that I just feel like they're in the wrong place. They're not there for the right reasons. And this video is to try and inform those people who are feeling that way. Please consider what you're joining and what you're doing. It is not about just filling in paperwork, doing the minimal amount you can, and getting what you need out of it and going. It's a higher belonging than that. You're, you're really joining something that is so much more, so, so much more, even as a reservist. You know, I'm a reservist. I know I'm gonna get hit in the head for this, but I feel like reserves and reg force work together regardless of what time they're putting in. They're still part of an organization that is doing a part for the bigger need of the country or whatever national interest we have. And just because you're part-time doesn't make you any less important than a regular force soldier. I know I'm gonna get hit on the head with that in, this, in the comments section, people will hit me for that, and I appreciate that. But those people who are joining need to realize that, that they're not just this entity that's separate from everyone else as a reservist, and they get to do the minimal amount of work and they don't have to put 100% in, they don't have to be proudful of pride, proud of their work, etc., etc. They need to commit. They need to be a part of it and, and get involved. And it's just really tough. And another really difficult part for me to adjust to right now is the social aspect of soldiering. As a junior soldier, one of the most exciting things for me was getting to interact with a whole host of different people that you would never experience to meet anywhere else in your normal civilian career. You get to meet people from different cities, different countries, provinces, nationalities, whatever it may be. And they all come with their own unique experience, backgrounds, personalities, and it was great. And the greatest part was you didn't always get along. You were able to kind of, you know, find those people you didn't get along with. It was great. And you get to do that in civilian world too, but it's just not the same dynamic. It's not the same culture that you have in the armed forces and the military, especially in the army for me. And what I'm noticing still with new soldiers coming in is they don't have that care. They don't want to meet new people. They don't want to hang out. They don't want to socialize. They don't want to talk to one another. They'll do the bare minimal to talk to one or two people or their friends that they already know. And that's that. They won't go and be proactive and go jump out to someone and be like, hey man, how's it going? I don't know who you are, but here's me, here's you. You want to have a chat? Like maybe we'll get something in common. Maybe we won't, maybe we'll hate each other, but at least we tried, right? And you don't get it. You don't see that anymore. I, I, honestly, it's scary, you know, I, I won't mention specifics here, but what I do see is that's for instance, say a training evening or a training weekend's complete. The first thing everybody wants to think about doing is going home. Personally, my mentality and my mindset isn't quite set that way. I'm not, I'm not wired that way. My mindset is, okay, work's done. Let's go socialize. Let's go get along. Let's go find out if we have unique interests that we could get along with outside of work. Go shooting, clay shooting, target shooting. Go do some runs, fitness, video games. You know, you know my channel, you know I like video games, but you don't even have the ability to do so because all these new and younger soldiers coming in, they just disappear, gone. Literally, as soon as the bell rings and we're done, finished for the night, that's it. They're in the, they're in the vehicles, they've gone. They've left, they haven't even try to socialize and the great thing about the army and i'm sure mil uh, the other military forces and the other armed forces branches the same i can uh, i know they are is that we have a huge sense of looking after our own that's how we work and it's the same for the fire department i'm sure and the police etc but the army we look after our own after and before and during work no matter what at all times once you're in you're in and once work's done it doesn't mean you clock out and you're done that's army switch off it means you have the opportunity to hang out with people and get to know them. And if you don't do that, you're making a more difficult environment for yourself or not as a dynamic and more enjoyable experience when you're actually at work. So when I see these junior kids leaving, I'm like, well, I would like to have a chat with that guy or girl and see if they want to, you know, do something, maybe have a beer or if they're not old enough, because we do have, you know, younger members of the armed forces in our reservice. 
I don't know, go for a run, go for a jog, even just interact with a person, find out what makes them tick. Because that, especially as a leader, makes your life so much easier when you're at work because you, you understand what their problems are, you understand what the strengths are, their weaknesses, what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy. It just makes them a, a better experience for working. And without that mindset that we have from these new soldiers being there, there is no way to have that social interaction and that camaraderie, that ethos, that esprit de corps, I guess, that gets us all bonding. And a, a good example of this is whenever the evening's over and we have promotions, normally in the armed forces, especially in the army, we tend to finish after work and then go and have a drink. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. Be a pop, you don't even have to drink. Just come hang out and talk, socialize. Someone's been promoted. This is an experience, an important experience that you need to learn. And be like, this is what happens when someone gets promoted. It's important. Someone's worked hard to get that rank. Someone's worked hard to get to this position. You should come celebrate with us and come hang out. But it doesn't happen. People just leave. They, they don't care. And that is what's really upsetting and concerning to me. And I find it's it's increasing, ever increasing in its in its frequency and its strength, in that these people just don't want to be a part of that. And the numbers of people that do are diminishing. The generation of soldiers and military members are reducing drastically to the point where you have maybe six or seven people out of a unit of 40 or 50 people hanging out after a night or a day or whatever training that you're doing to say, you know what, congratulations, well done, you got promoted or, you know, uh, it's Remembrance Day, you know, we've, we've finished the parade ceremonies. Who would like to go back and, and talk and chat and hang out with some of the veterans or, or go to the Legion and, and hang out with some people? It's not a thing anymore. It's super upsetting and it's really making me very nervous because you see it for other things too, like history. Not many people, apart from obviously a lot of you guys who watch my channel, especially the younger generations now, have any care or interest into the heritage or the history of the armed forces. They join, they, they, they know about the particular branch or the service that they're in. They know the overall organization of the military or the army. When it comes to like historical events like Vimy Ridge and all these sort of battles and situations that Canada or any other military has been part of, again, doesn't come up in their in their vocabulary. They're just you mention these things, they're like, "What does that mean?" It's like, "Wow." Now, maybe I'm completely biased. Maybe I'm just on a totally different tangent here, another road that they are, and that is okay. What I'm not trying to say here is that these people are doing bad things and that they're, they're not good people and they're not good soldiers because they are but it i just wish more and more people would stop thinking about just themselves and start looking into the bigger picture of what you're a part of like you're not just a part of some you know job it's not just a job it's a culture it's a lifestyle and I know I'm repeating myself now and you're probably bored to death, so I'm just gonna cut it quits there. But um, I hope maybe those who are in the situation that I'm talking about and understand where I'm coming from, kind of take it with a pinch of salt, first of all. You know, this isn't sort of a, a witch hunt to be like, yeah, you guys, you know, why, why aren't you doing all these things and you should be doing them because I, I'm no person to be judging or dictating that. All I'm telling you is that I am concerned that I notice that more and it seems to be getting more and more apparent. And it's a little upsetting um, as a military member, especially in the army. And I'm sure many of you may be out there already experiencing the same thing. And I would love to hear your opinion and your comments on it. Please leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's little spiel as we drive home uh, and you enjoyed the, the kind of context and content that I'm talking about right now, please again, leave me a like. Let me know what you think about these kind of videos. If they're not interesting to you, don't want to hear about them. I won't do them, I'm not gonna waste my time on the channel. I know a lot of my videos right now, um, some of them are very niche, you know, not very many people wanna watch me playing squad or going to the firing range. They wanna learn about, you know, the SU-24 or they wanna learn about different fighter jets or tanks, and that's cool, that's what that's what my channel's about, primarily so it gets a lot of content, but I also like just chatting to you guys. So if you did enjoy, make sure you leave the comment section below. Also, check out my description box. We have Patreon, Facebook, Discord. You wanna just come hang out and chat. Maybe we can talk about this subject here. Um, and I will catch you guys around on the next video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks again. Bye-bye.